Should I use Genie Plus or Lightning Lane at Walt Disney World? Now that is a great question. Greetings, travelers. Welcome back to Tricircle Travel Co's Special Edition. This week, we'll be focusing on Genie Plus and Lightning Lane. So, do I need to use Genie Plus and Lightning Lane at Walt Disney World? And the answer is it depends. Ask yourself these questions. Is this your first and will be your only trip to Walt Disney World? How much is this going to cost me per day? Am I staying on property or at a good neighbor or other resort near Disney World? Do I know how to make the most out of Genie Plus and which parks would I need Genie Plus in? These are very important questions. Most people are still learning Genie Plus. It's not like FastPass was before the pandemic and I suppose that would be the best place to start, FastPass. Prior to the shutdown in March, 2020, Walt Disney World used the FastPass Plus system. This allowed you to pre-plan your Fast Passes, which were passes that allowed you a reduced wait time in most cases on some very popular and not so popular rides. You would pick three Fast Passes up to 60 days in advance of your first park day. And after you had used these Fast Passes, you could pick additional Fast Passes one at a time. You were allowed three in advance for each day each day's advance pick had to be in the same park. You could change them as needed depending on availability, and they were at no additional cost to you. Best of all, your travel advisors were allowed to help you pick your Fast Passes. In the beginning, Fast Pass Plus was excellent, but as park attendance increased, the cons outweighed the pros. Standby wait times were atrocious. There weren't always the fast passes that you wanted available, even if you were a diligent 6 a.m. 60 day out planner. You didn't actually skip the line, but waited in a shorter line. It just stopped being fun and useful. Fast forward to the present. Fast Pass Plus is now Lightning Lane. No, you cannot pick your Lightning Lanes in advance. They have to be picked day of. Yes, you have to pay a fee of $15 per person per day plus tax to use Genie Plus and Lightning Lanes. The most popular attractions are not necessarily included with the Genie Plus Lightning Lanes. Some are fancy rides, thank you very much All Ears Net, that are a la carte pricing per person and you can only have two of these a day. Resort guests can purchase the fancy rides at 7 a.m. All other park guests have to wait until park opening. At this time, you must have a park reservation and a valid ticket linked to your My Disney Experience app for each person you are purchasing the Lightning Lane for. Again, these are not skip the line passes, but a reduced wait pass. Kind of a lot, right? Yes. And you will want to tell the genie if you are park hopping so it can help you find those available Lightning Lanes at your next park. Nikki, what is the best way to use Genie Plus? In my opinion, the best way to use Genie Plus is to be an early bird. You may no longer have your travel advisor book your lightning lanes for you. Disney has asked travel advisors not to book lightning lanes. This was in their last webinar. So any TAs watching this, that's what Disney has instructed. Guests should be booking their own lightning lanes. As a guest, you will want to wake up at 6, 6.30 in the morning. Make sure everybody is linked in your My Disney Experience app. Purchase Genie Plus for all members in your traveling party that has a link ticket and a park reservation. Try for whatever virtual queue you want to get at 7 a.m. on the dot, then book your first lightning lane. If you wish to purchase a fancy ride individual lightning lane attraction a la carte for each rider in your family, this would be a good time to do it. But remember, only resort guests can do that. Here's where it gets sticky. If you're not a resort guest, you have to wait until the park opens to book your first fancy ride lightning lane. If you booked a regular Genie Plus Lightning Lane at 7 a.m., you cannot book your second Lightning Lane until two hours after park opening. A lot of people get this misconstrued. It's two hours after park opening. Now, rope drop that park and have a wonderful day. But Nikki, what if I don't want to get up so early? What do we do then? Well, Walt Disney World has always been a lot of planning. 
Genie Plus is just another part of that planning process. But what if you want to get to the parks later? Do you have a planner in your family who's an early riser? Then put them in charge of stacking lightning lanes. Purchase your Genie Plus after you get from the parks after midnight. Put your early riser in charge. Tell them the time you expect to be the at the park that you have a reservation for because remember you have to have a park reservation and a ticket to be admitted to the parks. Make sure your early riser knows what the must do's are for the family or the group and have them start stacking lightning lanes. This is totally acceptable to do. Now that you know this, you can see why those previous questions are so important. Is Genie Plus worth it? So let's ask ourselves those questions. Is this your first and will be your only trip to Walt Disney World? If yes, then you might want to consider using Genie Plus. But the secondary question is, do I need this for all the parks? And I'll cover that later. How much is this going to cost me per day? It depends on your family or group size and what they want to do. Genie Plus is $15 per person per day plus tax for all ticket holders in your party ages three plus. If half of your party doesn't want to use Genie Plus, then they don't need to purchase it. But no, they can't use the lightning lanes on the Genie Plus rides. The fancy ride lightning lanes are up to $15 per person plus tax, but the price depends on demand. Am I staying on property or at a good neighbor or other resort near Walt Disney World? This is only pertinent to early entry which is crucial to park strategy and fancy ride early morning selections. Yes, some of those fancy rides run out of lightning lane availability early in the morning. So if you intend to purchase individual lightning lanes for the fancy rides, then definitely stay on property. Even better, guests staying at select deluxe resorts will be invited to stay for extra hours at Epcot and Magic Kingdom on certain nights. And that may be the way to go to maximize your park time. Do I know how to make the most out of Genie Plus? If you are using a travel advisor, they may be able to tutor you on using Genie Plus. There are also many videos up on YouTube showing the pros and cons of Genie Plus. It may be a good idea to research. A lot of folks are having a hard time with Genie and Genie Plus simply because they do not know how to use it. Which parks would I use Genie Plus in? To me, this is the biggest question of all. And there are several sub questions and factors. First, early entry and extra park hours. Two, are you an early bird or a late riser? And three, what is the maximum wait time you are willing to wait for each ride? Here's an example. Let's say you're a family of four, two adults, a tween, and a nine year old. This is your first and will be your only trip to the most magical place on earth. You are going to Walt Disney World in July. You've booked your flights, you're staying on Disney property, you have eight nights, and you chose Park Hopper Plus ticket. If you're going to hop like I do, I start with Animal Kingdom and Epcot. Day one, Animal Kingdom in the morning. Day one, Epcot in the evening, rest in the afternoon. Probably won't need Genie Plus in either one of these parks. Well, why? Animal Kingdom has a few rides. Flight of Passage, generally a 45 to 80 minute wait. Navri River Journey, generally a 25 to 45 minute wait. Dinosaur, 10 to 15 minutes. Expedition Everest, 10 to 45 minutes. Kali River Rapids, 10 to 45 minutes. Kilimanjaro Safari, 10 to 30 minutes. And then shows like It's a Bug's Life, which is usually a 10 minute wait. The Lion King has certain show times. Finding Nemo has certain show times. You'll see that in the My Disney Experience app. Then you could take a train ride to Rafiki's Animal Planet for the Animal Conservation Station and Animation class, and then there's always the walking trails. Okay, so that's a lot. Why wouldn't I use Genie Plus? Well, use park strategy. You're staying on property, use the 30 minute early entry, and then rope drop flight of passage. Essentially, you're gonna wait 25 minutes. Then skip over to Navi River Journey, which is in the same land, then head over to the safari, your animals are going to be more active in the morning. Then head to Expedition Everest. You're probably going to catch a 10 minute wait. You'll have the major rides done by 9.30, 10 a.m. If the park opens at eight and you have that 7.30 early entry. And then everything else is icing. Oh, and definitely walk the trails before noon. It gets hot. I definitely recommend eating at an off time. So lunch at 1 p.m. either in a park or at a resort. 
You can always bus over to Animal Kingdom Lodge, hit Boma for a big meal, then bus back to Animal Kingdom and take a bus from there back to your resort to swim and rest. Then in the afternoon, head to Epcot. Rides they have are Spaceship Earth, which is usually a 5 to 25 minute wait, Test Track 35 to 60 minute wait, Frozen 30 to 80 minute wait, Mission Space 10 to 15 minute wait, Soarin' 25 to 45 minute wait, The Land 5 to 20 minute wait, the Seas with Nemo and Friends, 5 to 10 minutes. Journey into the Imagination with Figment, 5 to 10 minutes. In the World Showcase with a couple of Circle Vision shows like O Canada, Impressions de France, and The Beauty and the Beast. China's Movie, The Grand Fiesta Tour, and Mexico Pavilion is usually a 5 to 20 minute wait. And then also Epcot has the Harmonious Nighttime Spectacular and Disney Shorts. But Nikki, that's a lot too. So why wouldn't I use Genie Plus here? Again, Park Strategy. Check the Disney Genie, not the Genie Plus, for the lowest projected wait times for Frozen, Test Track, Soarin', Spaceship Earth, and Mission Space. For example, my app shows that Test Track's time is lower around 8 p.m. For Soarin', it shows low wait times just after 2 p.m. till park close. For Frozen, it shows low wait times also around 8 p.m. Spaceship Earth shows low wait times from 1 p.m. till park close. For Mission Space, it shows that the wait times are always low. Also, for Mission Space, do the green side of Mission Space if you cannot handle simulators. It's much easier. Okay, Nikki, but what about Remy? Well, as of right now, it says that you must try for a virtual queue. So you would attempt to get a boarding group at 1 p.m. because Epcot is not your starting park. If you don't get one, but still want to ride the ride, you can purchase an individual attraction selection, Lightning Lane, not the Genie Plus, but the fancy ride add-on, for the price listed per person and pick your time. You can do this at 7 a.m. If you are a Disney Resort guest, you do not need Genie Plus to do this. Would you purchase an individual attraction selection lightning lane for Remy? No, I don't believe it's worth it. I would wait and stand by or attempt a virtual queue, but Remy is not a ride that I would be upset about missing. Don't forget, if you are staying at a deluxe resort and Epcot has extra hours that night for deluxe resort guests, just stroll and enjoy yourself. There's no reason to rush or hop from ride to ride to ride. Enjoy it, walk around the World Showcase, try different food at the food booths if you're there during a festival, and watch Harmonious. Day two at Walt Disney World, I would probably start off with a mini golf and then hit up one of the water parks. They're usually open from 10 to six or 10 to five. There's no park reservations needed and this is included in your Park Hopper Plus option. And that afternoon, I would just sort of rest at the resort and kind of rest my legs. Day three, I would start at the Magic Kingdom and end at Disney Hollywood Studios. This is where I would consider purchasing Genie Plus. Up at 6, 6.30 to snag a slinky dog lightning lane for around the time you expect to go to Disney Hollywood Studios. Make sure Genie knows you're park hopping. Wait, 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 wait. Aren't we starting at Magic Kingdom? Yup. But again, park strategy. You're going to rope drop Magic Kingdom and head straight to Seven Dwarves Mine Train, then hop into Peter Pan, then to Tomorrowland for Space Mountain, depending on its wait time, or to Frontierland for Splash Mountain and Big Thunder, then to Tomorrowland. Book your next lightning lane in Magic Kingdom for Haunted Mansion or Pirates or both. Make sure you grab a snack, mobile order a Dole Whip, and try to head out of the park for a resort rest or lunch by 1 or 1.30 p.m. so you can cool off, swim, and take a nap. While you are resting, or even just after you use your last lightning lane at Magic Kingdom, take advantage of stacking those lightning lanes. Remember, you can book another every two hours. After your rest, hop to Disney's Hollywood Studios, start with your Slinky Dog Lightning Lane, then Tower of Terror, Rock and Roller Coaster, Smuggler's Run, spend part of the evening in Batuu, and then at the end of the day, hop in line for Rise of the Resistance. It's standby right now, no virtual queue, and it really doesn't matter at the end of the day how long you wait. Day four would be a resort day or a water park. Day five, you do the reverse Epcot in the morning, then Animal Kingdom in the evening. Again, you don't need Genie Plus. Day six, Disney's Hollywood Studios in the morning and Magic Kingdom in the evening. Make sure you stay for enchantment. Day seven would be a resort day, water park, and catch up on anything you feel like you've missed or want to repeat because day eight, you return home. If you are a seasoned Disney veteran, you know about park strategy. 
Nine times out of 10, it works depending on crowd levels. So I don't think that Genie Plus is gonna be something you're going to lean on. I also find that if I personally land in Orlando early enough and arrive at Walt Disney World around 5 to 7 p.m., it's nice to start with a trip to Disney Springs for some souvenir shopping and a nice dinner, and that's how you would incorporate that in. I find eight nights to be a nearly perfect time frame for a visit to Walt Disney World. Nikki, will you use Genie Plus and Walt Disney World the next time you go? Yes, probably on Magic Kingdom and Disney's Hollywood Studio days, but I am not too keen on purchasing the fancy rides. See, I go every few years, so FOMO is not necessarily a thing for me. So should you use Genie Plus? As you can see, it depends. It's totally up to you. Thank you for watching. Please like and share this video if you found it helpful. Please subscribe to the channel for more updates. We travel to Disneyland, Walt Disney World theme parks and cruise regularly. So click the notification bell when a new video pops up. If you want help booking your next vacation, look us up at www.tricircletravelco.com or send an email to tricircletravel at gmail.com. We focus on family vacation. If you want to support the channel, look us up on Patreon. Information is in the description and follow us on Instagram at Tricircle Travel, as well as follow our Facebook page. Thanks again for watching. I'm Nikki, your host and advisor, and I'll see you real soon.